A blacklister was given up on a platter 10 years ago by a stylish criminal genius known as the Concierge of Crime who entered FBI headquarters, asked for Assistant Director Harold Cooper, insulted Donald Ressler, and demanded money. There were more Russian agents than in Foggy Bottom in the 1970s, along with murders, covered pregnancies, betrayals, complex heists, and more. Tragic fatalities occurred, including those of Mrs. Kaplan, Mira Malik, Alan Fitch, Christopher Hargrave, also known as Tom Keane, and numerous others, in addition to Elizabeth Keane. Most unfortunately, Glenn Carter, a beloved character of viewers, and Clark Middleton, who played him so admirably in the Wellstone Agency. The second segment of this final starts almost immediately as Red and Chuck carry Demi into the first building they come across. Unfortunately, it's a nursing home and not a hospital or one of Red's mobile hospital units. Red demands that Dem be treated right away by the on-duty nurse. It is understandable that the nurse is hesitant, especially given that Demi obviously needs a blood transfusion. Red offers his own suitable supply as a volunteer, insisting, book us up, he says. Cooper has returned to the stunning bloodbath with Wrestler, which is fortunate because Nixon is now blaming Wrestler for allowing them to be attacked by Red. Ishwood intervenes to inform Nixon that he witnessed everything, so it doesn't get out of hand totally. Hudson started acting violently first while Demi, who was unarmed and trying to defuse the situation, had no intention of leaving with Red. A doctor from a neighboring hospital was assigned to treat a gunshot wound at a nursing home less than five miles from the crash site Herbie and Malik learned upon returning to TFHQ. Nixon asserts that Cooper and Wrestler may be drawing them away from Reddington while they make their way there. Does it mean you won't be arriving? Cooper quits angrily. It wasn't to be. Local police have already arrived at the care facility. Cooper, Wrestler, Ishwood, and Nixon enter the room where Demby is having surgery after following the trail of blood. They instantly leave after being sternly shoot out by the nurse, which is funny. Demb is somehow still alive but very ill following surgery. Red received a direct blood transfusion for Demby, according to the doctor, and departed nearly right away, though he was undoubtedly weaker as a result of the treatment. We urgently need a new villain now that Hudson is dead and Nixon is up to the task. With an earthshot of Herbie and Malik, Nixon tells Ishwood that he won't use shackles to restrain Red since he will put the man down when he finds him. That was a death threat from an FBI agent. Herbie concurs with me and informs Malik that he won't be present to see Nixon kill Red. I cherish Reddington, and Sue and Holly adore him. They would never forgive me if I assisted the FBI in capturing Raymond. I could never begrudge myself. As he leaves TFHQ, he gives Malik one last parting question. Are you sure you're on the right side? Even when he was preparing sandwich platters for the team, which is now down to three, I never loved Kirby more. Cooper goes to meet the homicidal agent as soon as Malik informs him that Nixon is being bugged. Things immediately spiral out of control when Cooper accuses Nixon of running his mouth, and Nixon responds, Your time is up, old man. When pushing starts, Wrestler intervenes. I feel a little let down, especially when Nixon turns to go and says, Nice talk, Grandpa. Cooper enters the lift rather than going back to attack the man so he and Malik can search Red's bathhouse for information. Yes, politically speaking, but it's still a shame. However, there's excellent news. Demi has woken up. However, Nixon and his operatives raid the bathhouse and suspect Cooper and Malik of collaborating with Red, so they can't even enjoy that for a full 30 seconds. As they go, our two practically roll their eyes. Red is awake as well, but she is still frail after giving so much blood. He has left the United States and is currently staying at Angela's house in a Spanish-speaking nation. Even while it's reassuring to see that he's out of the FBI's reach, we're just halfway through the episode, so I remain extremely concerned. Suspicions were correct. Malik considers the absence of any hints at the bathhouse and realizes that it is not significant, that nothing was present, because what was significant was what was absent. The bull is Lero's horns, which claimed the life of illustrious Matador Manalit. When Malik was assigned to be with Red that day, he told her the legendary tale and claimed that the skull belonged back in Andalusia, Spain, where the bull was grown, where it belonged. Cooper thinks that this all sounds very much like something Red would do, and Dem is aware of a villa Red favors that is close to that place. Wrestler departs for Spain, but he's wearing jeans, so that's great for him. Red is checking in with his favorite person while he is back in Spain. Agnes is pleased to hear from her pinky and receive guidance over a boy she likes. 
He gets into bed, and they have a lovely lengthy conversation. When Cooper receives a call, Demby is with him. Naturally, Red is interested in learning how his pal is doing. Demby chuckles, how could he not? Red brushes off his claim that he knows Red saved his life. It's truly a case of the chicken and the egg, who saves another person before being saved themselves. I've lost count of how many times and how long it's been. When Wrestler arrives at the property, Angela enables him to enter so he can look around, but he doesn't discover anything. He hangs up and makes calls to Cooper and Demi, who advise him to speak with the neighborhood street sellers Red enjoys. Red recognizes Wrestler right away when Angela mentions an American policeman showed a ride back at the property, a humorless man with good-looking hair. Later that evening, Cooper visits Demi in his nursing home and delivers the usual good news slash bad news scenario. He won't face prosecution for alerting Red, but the FBI has fired him. Den responds nicely to the news, saying Cooper it's time to look for a life with less firearms. Red awakens in Spain and decides to go for a walk around the countryside. Men will arrive. He says to Angela, they always come, and always leave before they arrive. Demi praises Red, especially for his determination to survive despite the continual fear of death in his life, while Cooper and we watch him move. He decides to get angry, to rage against the lights fading, Rage against the evildoers who wish to harm us all. Rage to defend those he cares about. To discover peaceful, joyful, exciting moments. Despite being aware that the light is still dimming. To lead a life of the utmost passion. It is the lesson that underlies all I have learned from him. He sobs as he speaks these words, and I can feel how much he loves Red. It breaks my heart. I'm delighted they opted to emphasize the fact that Demi and Red have always had this show's best love story. While in the store, Wrestler is displaying a picture of Red. He locates a vendor who has previously delivered to him and is familiar with his location. He is in the villa, although he is in the smaller side house rather than the main house. Naturally, Red has left by the time he arrives, but he does discover Red's clothes, his revolver, and the skull. He sets off in search mode. What is Red doing then if he isn't returning the skull to the ranch? Out of nowhere, it seems a bull shows up. Red simply stares at it out of curiosity rather than fear. Red approaches it head-on and calmly, much like so many other deaths before. Red stays put as the bull approaches in a few paces. The bull then charges. Wrestler is searching the area in a police-provided chopper when he spots his target. He crosses the pitch after touching down and stands there. Red's wounded, twisted, and broken body is lying on the field. Raymond Reddington is the chief of crime, the most sought man, the assassin, the mentor, the friend Pinky, the kind boss, the dangerous adversary, the N13 agent, the lover of cookies and art, the storyteller, the FBI informant, the mastermind, and a member of the blacklist. They're all gone now. Wrestler may finally contact Cooper and say, I got him, but he doesn't feel quite as satisfied as he previously anticipated. Perhaps for this reason, he locates the mangled hat nearby, dusts it off as best he can, and then puts it back on Red's head. It's a final expression of esteem, a suitable method to part ways.